Hello all my crafty people out there. Uh, we have a new project. If it's your first time visiting, my name is Stephanie and I upcycle thrifted items into new clothing items. Uh, sometimes the thrifted items aren't already clothing. And that's what we've got today. We have a quilt. And when I say quilt, I say it in the loosest form. I'm a quilter. And I love all of these beautiful jackets people are making out of quilts. But being a quilter, it makes it a little difficult for me to cut up somebody's work. Now, if it's in damaged shape, you know, it's it's not really repairable or you know, it, it's best to salvage it any way you can, by all means, I'll cut it up, make a jacket out of it, no problem. But this particular little quilt uh, is just one that I found, I believe I found this at the Goodwill. And it was... Can you read that? $2.99. So I only paid you now three dollars for it. It's not a full quilt. It looks like it might have been a crib quilt. It's not even like a twin size, but it's perfect for the jacket that I have in mind to make into. And although I love the pattern um, of the fabric, I'm thinking about dyeing it. That's the plan. We'll see how that goes. I wanted to kind of dye it a kind of a chocolate color. I'm not sure what that's going to do to the blue, but well, we can give it a try. Can't hurt it. It was only $3. But what we're going to be using as a pattern is, and this is just one piece of it. This is the, um, this is the front. No, this is the back, sorry, because there's the fold line. This is a pattern from Bootstrap Fashion. Now, I'm pretty sure, well, I'm not pretty sure. I know that I've watched some videos and figured out that Bootstrap's a great place to buy um, customized dress forms. So you put your size of your, all your measurements in, and then they create a PDF of your dress form. And you get it in this format, and you turn around and cut it out. Well, there's several formats. You can print it out in long pages like I think I'd have to send it to FedEx you know but I had eight and a half eleven options uh, available to me just for standard size paper so I ordered mine in PDF form which is the only form it comes and I ordered the dress form and I also ordered two patterns now this one is pattern number um, I don't know if you can see it four five eight three it's a it's a little jacket with welt pockets in the front and it came like I said, in a stack, I, I, I had to print a stack of, of paper to get the pattern. And then they've got really good instructions on how you line it up, tape it all together. And then once it's all taped together, you can cut it out. Uh, it was super simple and I would highly recommend it. If you want to check it out, um, I'm gonna link uh, to this pattern in the description. You can go there and check out all their patterns. They have a lot of patterns and they're super cheap. I mean, five dollars, okay? So, oh, and it's a 10% discount if you use that link on your first pattern you buy, so. Anyway, we're gonna give this a try. I think there's enough fabric in this little quilt to do this jacket. I might have to do the, like the, the lapel that goes inside the, the lining for the lapel on the neck in a different color um, or different fabric because I don't think there's enough here, but. I'm, I'm not really concerned about that, but I might dye the fabric first so I can get a good match on what I want to use um, and that for the little welt pocket too. So if you like this kind of content uh, or if you're just feeling adventurous, watch, have fun with us. Um, I am not a perfectionist and it shows, uh, but we're going to get it done. So let's go have some fun. Okay, I think I said, I'm pretty sure I said, that I wanted to dye this. And it's it's just white with this blue design, kind of a turquoise blue, as my friend used to say, turquoise. Anyway, um, I think I want to do a little color on it. I'm kind of thinking something sort of like a, a tea stain, you know, but... I'm not wasting my good tea bags. So I have a couple of writ options. 
I have this dark brown and then I have this cocoa brown and I'm kind of I'm leaning toward if it came out to be really this color I'm leaning towards this cocoa this dark brown um, this has a little bit more red tint than I'm I'm looking for both of them are all-purpose so they're supposed to be good for synthetics now this one does not have a tag on it except for um, this that's all it says doesn't have anything and I, I cannot I couldn't even Google search this tag so I, I don't know I have no idea where it comes from or what it's made of it feels like a cotton blend but I don't know if that's poly it's probably cotton poly so on these it says that you're supposed to I think you're supposed to do either salt or vinegar depending on what you've got the blend what blends in here so we might be doing it up kind of fancy it's a little big for me to put in a pot so I'm going to test out the whole putting it in the washer thing I've seen videos where they say it works out perfectly fine if you do a really good rinse afterwards so fingers crossed we're gonna go dye this in the um, in my little tiny washer I live in a very tiny house right now so I have a little stackable washer and dryer like you'd find in an apartment. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to go put it in the wash. And I think, I think I'm going to go with this dark brown. All right. We are preparing to dye our little quilt. And I made the decision that I'm going with the dark brown. Oops, there you go. You see it? without the glare it's all-purpose dye and it recommends that if you're going to be dyeing a cotton blend that you use a cup of salt well by the way that's a lot of salt so I put salt on my grocery list uh, I'm not got a whole cup but pretty good and a teaspoon of dish detergent so I have my dish detergent over here and we did a real scientific experiment to find out how hot our water was instead of going in the closet and opening up the little panel on the hot water heater. Essentially, we, we have a hot water temp of about 130. Now, do I think that's high? Probably. But that means that I can use the hot water here because it requires 140 degrees, so we should be good. So I'm going with, I'm going to go with a medium wash and a medium load level so it will have more water in there than the uh, than the little blanket so whew, never done this before we are going to we're gonna have to fill it first because I think this one won't fill I don't think it'll start oh maybe it will okay cool all right so I'm going to put in a teaspoon, maybe a little more than a teaspoon of soap, and we can tell it's hot water. And we're just going to shake some salt around, make sure we get it off of the agitator there. And Let it finish loading up, and I'm going to go ahead and put the whole thing in dye. It says shake well. So, let me see how this is going to go, and then um, I'll stop it for a minute while I finish loading, and I'll come back when I've got the blanket in there, and we'll be crossing fingers. All right, let's see what we got here. I don't think it had time to really darken up. It's kind of the tea stain I was looking for though, which is good. So it's just tea stained in color, which again, that's perfect for me. I didn't want it to be like chocolate. So 
So I have laid out, uh, there's three primary pieces to the jacket that need to be cut out of this. Um, I do have other pieces, uh, again, lining pieces for the collar, the lapel. Those pieces are going to have to be cut out of something else because I'm limited in the amount of fabric I have here. But at least now I know I've got a good color palette to work with. I know what I want color-wise. I could do something darker. I could do something um, in the turquoise color, you know, whatever I'd like. That'll be hard to match, though. So I was debating on whether or not to just put weights on these pieces of uh, pattern. The problem with that was I just don't have a lot of weighted things, and I'm, I'm always worried about it slipping when I do that. Um, so I am actually doing the good old pinning like I like to do. I know most of y'all were like, would be like, come on, girlfriend, get you some weights. But we're going to work with pins. I'm just making sure that there's, there's room in all of this for all these pieces. It really is going to be maximizing all of the fabric here, which is great. That's, that's fine. That's perfect for me. Less waste is good for me all the time. So I have the back piece on the fold. I'm working on the front of the jacket, which needs two pieces, and then the arms will be here, and again, they'll be two pieces. So I'm just gonna keep on pinning. And the way you have to kind of pin this is you have to get your hand under it. I'm not using a whole bunch of pins because it is so stiff. But I'm just, you get your hand under it and you make sure the pin goes through all the layers and comes back up. So once I get through pinning, then I think we're gonna get wild and crazy. Since this is kind of thick, Voila, we're gonna break out <gasps> the electric scissors. I'm terrified of these things. I don't want them to tear up my um, my material and I've only got one chance at this, but we're gonna give it a try. These are those, can you read it? Sorry, the glare is pretty bad. Um, pink something, pink power. Not really sure how I feel about that. That's why I got the turquoise ones. So. Anyway, we're going to give those a whirl. Oh, lordy, lordy. All right. Uh, let's see if I can do this. It's much easier cutting through this thick quilting, two layers of quilting. All right, everybody. I think I selected a good fabric to go with our turquoise. And I think it'll it'll be a perfect complement, not, uh, not anything contra uh, contrasting, but a complement. They have got all of the lining pieces cut out. These are the two pieces that will go on the front of the jacket. This is the neckline that will go behind the uh, the neck. These are the two welt pocket tops and all of them I went ahead and cut the interface out and attached it. It was just iron-on fusible interfacing and this is the hem tab as it's being called. Um, I've never worked with something like this just a little excess interfacing here. So I'm trying to figure out exactly how it works. Now I've read over the instructions a couple of times and if I'm understanding correctly, this is assembled to this prior to it being put in to the jacket. Makes me a little nervous, but we're gonna give it a try. And then if I'm wrong, maybe I can contact some kind of support because I've already contacted them once to ask them about, you know, discounts and stuff like that. So they've been really Johnny on the spot. Good support. So we're going to see if we can do that. I've never attached 
something all together before I put it in the jacket. So that's, that's like I said, that's going to be a little weird. All of the seam allowances are 3 8 inch. Oh, and these are the two pockets. The pockets I, oh, confuse me too because they're two different sizes. But the reason they're two different sizes, it's hard for you to see that, is because the bigger one goes behind, it, it goes like this. And the welt pocket piece will be up top, like here. So that's why they're different sizes because I was confused about that too. All right, I am used to a pattern with pictures. I ain't gonna lie to you. So this is something new. I've got all the pieces cut out. These are just the pattern pieces. And these are the big pieces, the three primary or four primary pieces, five I guess actually, two front panels, the back that's on the fold, and the um, sleeves. So, the first thing you're supposed to do is the welt pockets. And that would make sense because they're going to be the on the exterior. And it'll be easiest to do them before you assemble. So I'm going to take this apart, um, at least up to here. And I'm going to see what the best way is to mark this. I'm thinking about folding it maybe even under like this so if I fold it on that line then I can draw that line exactly where it's at Okay, I read through the instructions just to make sure and I'm going to go ahead and skip a step if that's possible. I went ahead and, and measured again just to make sure that my pockets were lined up. I even put the pieces together the whole nine yards. What's under here is the welt and I have put it three eighths of an inch inside of that box that I believe is the is supposed to be the pocket. If it's outside of that 3 8 inch and you line that raw edge directly up with the box, the bottom half of the box, it doesn't cover the pocket. So I'm assuming I have to do a seam allowance inside the pocket and I'm going to go ahead and sew on the smaller pocket uh, at the same time because I, I don't see what the point of having two different stitch po uh, stitch processes are for that. And then the larger pockets, um, if I'm understanding correctly, they have to be assembled up here at the top. And they come over the line as well. And I'll stitch them and then we cut down the center and we do little notches in the ends and we fold all of this into the jacket. They've both been sewn on and this is how it looks. This is the sleeve area, this is the neck. And I've got this one sewn on and they're both butting up against each other. So what I have to do is open this up so I can cut into it. Now what I found was easier was just to take my rotary cutter and make a slice here so I can get my scissors in there. I'm going to cut down the end and I'm going to cut it almost to the end about three-eighths of an inch away from the corner there which is kind of hard to do with dull scissors and then I'm going to take and snip Oops! hope y'all can see that I'm going to snip to the corner Oops. that and like that and the same thing over here I'm gonna run it down the side in the middle and when I get down to the end down there I'm gonna snip I'm gonna snip 
All right. Now that allows me an area to, or an out opening, to put everything inside. So I'll pull my pockets to this side. Now in the instructions, it says I'm to pull the welt in too. But the problem is the welt doesn't fit in that pocket. It doesn't, I mean that, that opening. It's too big. At first I thought I needed to maybe put the welt further down um, when I was attaching it, but that didn't seem to work either. So what I've done to kind of make it work is once I get the pocket inside, then instead of stuffing this in, which doesn't work for me because it's too big, I have to pin it down and then top stitch it here and here. So that's what I did with the other one and that's what I'm going to do with this one. And so I will top stitch it like this and top stitch this one as well. This one may be not quite, doesn't want to cooperate but I can get it to cooperate and put a pin in it as well. And when I top stitch it, I just want to make sure that my pocket underneath is not in the way. And then once I'm through top stitching it, I'll come in here, I'll line these two pocket bags up as they call them and I'm just going to stitch around the edge. Okay everybody, we got the pockets in, sort of. I'm not really excited about the way these came in. I mean, they look nice from the outside, but the instructions, I, I'm, I'm still kind of confused about that, that particular part. Now the rest of it is pretty straightforward until we get to the lining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the shoulder seams and then I am going to stitch the sleeves in. Now the tricky part about these sleeves is they don't have any darts. So I don't know what the front is to the back. Now they look, they look pretty even. So I, I don't know that it's gonna make any difference. I'm assuming the shoulder will hit properly, but you can see here that the, the front and the back seam are just a little bit different not much. I guess it won't make a difference. So again, side seams, putting the sleeves in, and then sewing down the side seams, and then I'm supposed to put the lining in. The lining is a little unusual as well because this is the front, you know, kind of what I call the lapel lining, you know, what goes in the in the front of the jacket. And then this thing, uh, and this this is the little piece that connects it all together. So I can, understand, I can get the neck. I get that. But this piece I've never worked with before. And this is called, they're calling it a hem tab. And what it's supposed to do is, according to the directions, I'm supposed to connect it to the lining first. And then when I sew it all in, essentially I'm just going to be sewing all the way around all the raw edges of the jacket to sew this lining in, which would be down the front and around the bottom. So we'll see how that goes. All right, um, I put the lining together like it instructed. So I sewed the back of the neck to the front pieces of the lining. And then it instructed me to put this tab, this hem tab all the way on to, already onto this, um, this inner lining for the front. So Again, I've never done this before like this, so we'll see. But while I was surging on this piece, I went ahead and went all the way around just um, just to give it a, a finish. So it's it's shouldn't fray or anything like that because it is cotton, you know. With, even with the interfacing on it, it could fray. So this is what it looks like. It's a little different. Okay, I am going to admit I am pleasantly surprised that that lining went in perfectly. 
without any problems and it lined up very well there was a little bit of excess here in the curve but that just working with the serger makes that so much easier to maneuver but the lining and this weird hem tab went in perfect now i'll probably need to tack this down by hand and tack my pockets behind it uh somehow but i i'm I'm really happy with the lining. So the only thing we've got left to do, other than embellish with a, some buttons or snaps, is um, need to put the binding on. And I am going to put it on like I would a quilt. Where I'm going to put it like this, and I'm going to buy. I'm going to sew it all the way around, all the uh, the raw edges, including on the sleeves. And then once I've once I've done that, so we'll, let's just pretend like this is our seam. Then I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to tack it down from the back, and that should give us the finished edge we need to um, have this look really cute. And we just like I said, we're just going to fold it over. And, it's, and we're going to treat it like we would a, a binding on a quilt. The, the good part about this is, is this is on the bias, so it will hit these curves and go around very, very pretty easily, I guess. So I, all I've got to do is make sure that when I sew it on that I catch, I am in the bottom of that serge line so I don't, so it doesn't show when I, um, when I turn it over. I honestly started to put this on at the same time that I put the lining on and just sew it all at once. My only concern was I just, I, I wasn't sure how this lining was going to turn out. Now that I know it turns out well on the next jacket, I will put the binding on and the lining on at the same time. All right, everybody, I got it pinned, the binding pinned all the way around. And, oh, these are some buttons. I made buttons. Um, there's a little tool that I have. I might do a video on that. It's, you know, they're not perfect, but they're the same color, so they'll work. I just wanted four to go on the front. So I have buttons. These are 28 millimeter buttons. But like I said, they didn't come out perfect, so I may buy more. I'm not sure. I was just experimenting with these. But there are some great tools out there to uh, make your own buttons. So, anyway. Another video. I've got the binding put on as far as pinned on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow. I'm going to sew it from the lining side or the back side, the inside, whatever we want to call it, the inside of the jacket, and I'm going to sew along that serge line because that way I'll know for sure that on this side I will have hidden that seam on the front. And then I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to stitch it down just like I would a quilt binding. Um, what I did, of course, I sewed it to the right side and turned it over to the back. And you will notice, possibly, that this is hand stitched. So, note to self, next time I make a binding for this jacket, because I used a serger to make all the seams, the serger seam was obviously a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. So I would take and make my binding probably two and a half inches, possibly even three inches. Now I think it turned out great, but I did have to hand stitch it um, to when I turned it over to the other side. Just because I could not stitch in the ditch and be sure that I could catch it from the front. So if it was longer in the back then when I stitched in the ditch down this line it would catch that back you know you live you learn also I would have surged the top of this um, lining before I put it in too didn't do that I probably would surge the pockets too anyway I'm still happy with it it's a little big uh, and now it's supposed to be big on the shoulders because it's got one of those sloping shoulder seams it doesn't fall directly on the shoulder it's not supposed to i'm going to leave the sleeves this length and i'm going to put binding around the edges and i'm just going to fold them up 
And part of that is because I may give this to my daughter, and she's obviously taller than me. Most people are. And um, she'll need a longer sleeve, so I don't want to hem it to my width, I mean my length, and not, not have it fit her. So the only thing I've got left is binding on the sleeves and buttons. One more thing I want to show y'all before I finish this up. I did test out the buttonholes. They're going to be... They're going to be okay. I think machine's going to be able to take it. I'm measuring the front of my jacket to figure out where I want my buttons. I'm only using four. So I'm starting one here and then five inches or five inches down. I'm putting one there, five inches there, five inches there. I think them each being that many uh, inches apart is, is going to be perfect. I think they're spaced well. So I just use the good old handy dandy ruler to kind of get an idea this is your jacket when you make one or when you make anything it's yours make it any way you want if you want six buttons put six buttons if you want three if you want two whatever you want I just happen to like four on this particular one in this size so I'm gonna go over to the machine and put these in uh, the buttonholes and I think I'm going to do some short videos, some tutorial videos on how to do the binding and miter your corners. I can probably do them better than this because this was had, had to be hand stitched. Um, maybe a better tutorial on the Wells pocket, welt pockets, uh, a tutorial on the buttons. There's a lot of pieces to this particular project that are intricate in themselves. So. Uh, I'm using my machine's buttonhole maker to make simple buttonholes in these four places and I may even do a tutorial on that but the only problem with that is every machine is different. I mean most of them have a basic foot for buttonholes but you know they they can be completely different depending on the make of the machine. So let me go put these four buttonholes on and then then I'm going to try it on and it's going to be big but that's okay. Okay, everybody. I think it turned out pretty cute. Nothing too fancy. It is big. It's supposed to be big, but it is long on the sleeves, and I could cut that down. But I left them long, so I'm going to probably give it to my daughter because she's much taller than I am. And um, I know there was a lot of techniques in here. And I'm hoping to make shorts of them. I made a short of the bias tape, but I'm hoping to make shorts maybe of the buttons and how minor corners. Uh, it'll take a little bit, but I'll get some more stuff out there for y'all for techniques. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed it. If you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, and uh, have fun with us. So I will catch y'all on the flip side of our next project.